We are so excited to have the Royal Cowsers on our show today, Jill and Jarrett Cowser, to be soon. Welcome to our show. So, you're engaged. Now what? So, Jean, I am super excited because you and I have been talking so much about our own weddings and having photographers and uh, so many different guests on, but we haven't really dissected somebody else's planning from somebody who is in the thick of it, not going through memories, but is just right there, <laughs> right? Ready and raw to talk about it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome, Jill and Jarrett Kowser. Uh, you guys call yourselves the Royal Kowsers. Am I saying that right, Kowser? Yes, you are. So, so thankful and grateful that you guys are coming down here today to talk about your planning processes and all that's, you know, you didn't have your wedding yet. So all that's been going into it. (laughs) Welcome guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. 198 days to go. Yeah. 198. 198. That's amazing. (laughs) And for everyone who's listening, uh, Jill and Jared have hired us to do their wedding. Uh, There were their videography team and their photography team, and they are not your typical wedding. We're going to go into that in just a little bit. It is a production, and so we want to know all about the planning behind it and what that's been like for you guys. Let's do this. Yeah, very excited. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Like, where are you guys from? Where did you grow up? What do you guys do? And then we're going to get into what is the Royal Cowsers, because this is the title of this event, right? The Royal (laughs) Cowsers. Yep. What hospital were you born (laughs) in? Chestnut Hill Hospital in Philadelphia. Um, go ahead, Jared. Start us off. Okay. Um, I'm Jared Kauser. I am from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a uh, Philly kid. Um, and uh, I moved to New York uh, about 12 years ago um, and have been crushed it ever since. My profession, I'm in gaming. Um, marketer, producer, creative, all the above. And super hip. They're, they're both <laughs> yes. a very hip couple. Yes. We try. You know, we got it going on. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> Um, my name is Jill, uh, soon to be Kowser, and uh, I'm a New York City girl, born and raised. Uh, went to high school, LaGuardia Performing Arts. She's very proud of her uh, high school. Yeah, what was yeah. your high area? Um, I was a drama major. I don't know if you could tell I'm a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> if not, we're gonna find out more why. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I studied theater, and then I went into production because I wanted to change the what was being presented. I wanted to be um, able to tell stories that haven't been told before. And um, now I do casting, directing for reality TV shows, um, different web series, um, feature films, different things like that. And I'm able to make people's dreams come true. Love it. Including mine. Oh, sweet. So you guys are in the thick of planning and you still love each other. Deeply. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. I uh, Explain just, how this is possible, please. I was just having lunch with someone. Um, and if I can speak to any grooms out there with this, I was just having lunch with someone. And, you know, we we were talking about, oh, how's, your, how's the wedding going? And, you know, I, I kind of had my positive spin on it. I think, you know what? You know what I think it is why you're happy and why she's not like crazy mad at you? I said, why is that? He goes, because you're actually planning with her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Like, oh, so that wasn't your process? He goes, no, 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 no. I just said yes to things. So I think uh, a key to um, having a happy, you know, planning process is to really get involved and have both people care about what you're talking about. Because I don't think you always have to agree and we don't always agree on everything um, that we decide to do. But being involved and knowing the decision that's being made, I think, gives your partner that confidence um, to make the decision. That has so much meaning in it because think of what a marriage is. You guys are already a team and Mm -hmm. making decisions together, making it happen. So, And that makes a lot of sense, too, because I I think a bride or a groom, whoever's more the one that's more involved in the planning, the one that's less, they can kind of sense the indifference. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's just pressure back on that person. Right. Like if you are the person who like is a planner and and you take that planning lead. It doesn't mean you don't want someone still like, right. you know, confirming your decisions, being a part of it, making you feel that like the things you're doing are right, you know, and and I personally, I, I don't want a yes person, right? Like I want like real opinions and thoughts mm-hmm. about things like give me your true right. input and feeling because so it can be the best it can. Mm-hmm. So That makes a lot of sense. I want to give Jared more credit than he deserves but and say that he's been doing 
80 percent of it <laughs> and I'm not saying that I've been just saying yes but it's just like his ideas are so like crazy that I'm just like you know what that might actually be great she, yes. but she's been really good with like um can we afford that yeah <laughs> and I feel and like let's, keep guys hear. let's dial it back <laughs> wait till you guys hear some of the crazy ideas that they have going on for their wedding yes. um wait but before we get there how did you meet yes um, it was a New York City love story. <laughs> we <laughs> oh, met you at said a- drama, so now, <laughs> yeah. now I'm sensing it. So let's hear um, it. We met at a bar. <laughs> um, he walked up to me. All I saw was a smile through the darkness. And he was... For the ones listening, I'm, I'm dark-skinned. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that smile was shining, baby. And it was so great. He just pulled out his hand and asked me to dance. To um, Neo and Pitbull. Somebody sexy, tell them hey. Yeah. And so it. here I am, like appreciating a man who doesn't want to just, you know, rub on me and like turn me mm-hmm. over. He's here turning me around, spinning. I'm so excited. I start jumping in the air, hit myself with a TV that's like Bomb. hanging. Oh, oh no. Oh my God. Hard. No. It was, it was, I was hard. embarrassed for her. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little embarrassed. But then that kind of like broke the ice. Literally, I you know, head butted the ice and I broke it. <laughs> and we were, you know, uh, connected after that. He was like, are you okay? He was so, so much of a gentleman that mm-hmm. I was like, oh, wow, this is a really nice guy. And we started talking, had a lot of things in common. And um, the rest of it is history. Yeah, yeah, she gave me good vibes, man. Like it was, it was, you know, Tonic East, which I think actually is closing down now, yeah. which I'm really sad about. But it's Tonic East, if you're familiar with New York City, it's in Murray Hill, it's on the east side, you know, lower 20s. Um, and it was a packed, packed night, right? It was me and a friend of mine who was visiting from Philly. And uh, we were just bored. Like, there was no one really having yeah. fun, you know? It was kind of one of those nights where everyone just stands around and looks at each other. And it's like, I don't want to be in this energy. And I saw, out of the corner of my eye, this girl being like, you know, so full of life and so excited and his big curly hair. And I was just like, so cute. I am going to go. And she was surrounded, actually. You didn't talk, you didn't say this. She was surrounded by people uh, clearly she was with and they were all just mean mugging, arms folded, standing there too. I'm like, she, look, I have to save her. She can save me <laughs> yeah. and I can go save her. So I, you know, took a leap and went over to her. And, and now I guess the rest is history. It's been, it'll be nine years. That was, the, yeah, I was going to ask how, so nine years you guys. Yeah. Yeah. September 18th. Yeah. September 18th. Yeah. You stood the test of time, that's for sure. You know, knock on wood we're trying over here yeah that's amazing yeah when did you get engaged december, december 7th, 7th 2018 all right yeah. now and what did you do <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um can i i guess i have the caveat this was literally um a tv show a funeral and an engagement like yeah. let me break this day down to you okay? <laughs> so the the day well, she said there's gonna be drama involved, yeah so. oh my gosh so the day started with um and and Backstory, I have been working on her engagement ring for over a year. Like I took, I take my time to do anything and it has to be detailed. It has to be perfect. Yeah. Um, and I went to Jill like, you know, years ago, just in passing. So like, you know, what kind of rings do you like? And she looked me in the eyes and said to me, don't ever ask me that. I have no idea. And it was immediately from that point forward. Oh, I was like, girl. you're going to have to figure it out. You got to go figure it out. So luckily for me, I took this opportunity. Yeah. I took my time. I did my research. I hired an amazing artist to help me design and create this this thing, this this beast. Oh, you did and, really well. And there's so much detail <laughs> in it. And there's there's stories in the ring that you oh, probably wow. can't even see. But I, I wanted to do something that was personal, that was classic, like her, but had a little shine to it because because mm-hmm. she's because she's fancy. Um, <laughs> So, so anyway, so I had the ring. I had literally flown across the country to go get it in Sacramento. I now had the ring for 48 hours and it was burning a hole in my pocket mm-hmm. and I'm getting nervous. Um, I had already set up what I thought was going to be like a 20 person like surprise event. Turned out to be over 100. That That's not saying so. <laughs> um, but that day. <laughs> what? Yeah. Can I say that part? Yeah, go ahead. So that day um, I appeared on the Dr. Oz show with our dog. Um, Harley of Harlem. Harley of Harlem oh on Instagram. God. Follow him. <laughs> um, and we did like a segment about disinfectant wipes and how to properly use it. Which and, is very topical right now with this. Um, hello. <laughs> Check out my episode on Dr. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how to use wipes with dogs? Like for their paws? Or? Oh, um, for, for their toys. For oh. any. Anywhere that, you know, they get their germs on, you know, you want to properly disinfect. I learned that just using one isn't enough. You have to let it sit. That's not how you get to 99%. Yeah. You don't get 90. You have to let it sit for like two, three minutes wet. So that's like several wipes. So if you think that that. you can make your wipes last, you're using it wrong. 
using it wrong. <laughs> Are you sponsored by the wipes company? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, me Clorox. and Dr. Oz have our own thing, okay? <laughs> Dr. Oz is amazing, by the way. I, I just that. learned how to wash hands the other day. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Scrub, yeah. scrub, scrub. scrub. <laughs> Yeah. Sing happy birthday. <laughs> and so I was so like on cloud nine. I'm like, I'm on Dr. Oz. People are hitting me up. They're like, oh, girl, I saw you on Dr. Oz. I was like, I know. It's crazy. Did you see my dog too? They're like, yes. Oh my gosh. So here I am. Like nothing can stop me. And my sister had said, hey, one of my friends, um, she's a makeup artist and she's trying to get um, different faces for her portfolio. I can't make it today, but can you make it around 4 to 6 p.m. to get your makeup done? Yeah. I said, is it free? She said, yes, it is. I was like, does it include lashes? She said, yes, it does. I'm there. <laughs> so she came over, she did my makeup and here I am. I'm like, this is the type of treatment I need. I'm on Dr. Oz. Like <laughs> I'm on top of the world, baby. <laughs> All the while, I'm nervous. I had set up the obviously the the makeup person coming in and working. I had with no idea. Sister. Oh, this yeah. was a setup. Oh, it's all set up. It's it's all, all set up. It was all a setup. Oh, and wow. I'm nervous that she was gonna like Wait, understand. Can I, I just want to pause, but I just want to, you know, commend you on something for a second because a typical well, this is should I say it this way? I'm just gonna say it. A typical man, right? They're not going to pay attention to whether your nails are done, or your makeup's done. Well, in, right? in the defense of my husband didn't. In defense of that's Jill's- it, I'm yelling at him when I get home. <laughs> that's it. Well, <laughs> defend him a little bit and give credit where it's due. Jill's sister and one of her best friends uh, were adamant about. Listen, if you're going to propose to her, make sure her nails are done and make sure oh, she so looks good. Oh, so they put the okay. So that was the two. I was I was focused on the ring. Well, I that's had nice it. that you admitted like, that. And they were like, <laughs> yeah. look, those things have to be taken care of. Like, and that's a true girlfriend. They have your back. Yeah, Listen, that is and cool. The, and it was weird because uh, the day before the uh, what I call the Doctor Oz episode day, <laughs> no, the proposal day. Yes. Um, he. Uh, I went with my friend. She's like, oh, come, let's go get our nails done. I'm like, oh, that's fun. I haven't done my nails in so long. You know, I've been thinking about getting them done. They're like, oh, what color are you going to get? I'm like, you know, classic red. I was like, oh, that's great. That's great. And here I am thinking like, because it's December, you know, mm -hmm. holidays coming up. I'm like, yeah, holidays, duh. They're like, but I knew. Like thinking about it now, I'm like they knew they were that I was about this to was get a team proposed effort. to. Wow. So oh all of Jill's goodness. people, thank you so much. I was hoodwinked by so <laughs> many. So two days before she got her nails done, day of the makeup artist comes by to do her her makeup, and as she's getting her makeup done, um, unfortunately we had a stop before we were going to our location where I proposed at, and the stop before was actually go to a wake, and actually for Jill's like best friend, so her grandmother passed. Um, yeah, you know so. you want to be with your friends for the good and the bad times. So I was like, let me pass by before whatever event. You know, cheer her up with my beautiful makeup. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> no, it, it was really like something she appreciated. And, and it was right down the street from where we were going. Yeah, so. and I, I guess I didn't really know how close it was, but it was really awesome and nervous that it was that close. But so um, so now she's getting her makeup done and I'm standing there thinking, oh, OK, what are you going to you know, wear to the funeral? Right. And I'm like, oh, wait. So this is the funeral, but also what she's going to be proposed to. And like, it has to service both things. Like if it's too conservative or it, 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 it's got to work. So now I'm thinking like, what are you going to wear? So I asked her and she's like, oh, I don't know, probably like some jeans and like a shirt. And I'm just like, oh no, people are going to give me so much crap for like not like making her look beautiful. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to run out and go grab you something. Caveat, I do style Jill often. Like, so I have this. Yeah. It's not surprised that I was doing it. And she wasn't like shocked. She's like, okay. So I went to a store and I was like, okay, what works for both things? Like, What can she wear to a funeral and not look like, you know, for lack of a better word, negative. I knew somebody was into styling, you know? by the way, when you walked in. I said, by the way, guys, this is one beautiful couple right here. And I was like, who, who got his jacket? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go to Target. I mean, Thank I you. <laughs> it was a Christmas gift. Um, <laughs> so, so I went to a store. I picked up like, Two dresses, I think. And I was like, okay, you got to wear one of these. Like, because they were like muted colors, but also would hopefully look good in photography. I had hire a photographer for later. Anyway, so she was like, cool, whatever. Again, still on cloud nine, thankfully. She's like, whatever, okay. So it's we- like, I'm a star. I deserve dresses and makeup. Like, <laughs> I was on Dr. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> so we leave the house and we go to the first stop. Again, you know, very sad and, and obviously somber. somber, you know, but appreciative. It was, you know, someone who lived a full life. So it was, you know. Um, over overall, you know, good feeling. Um, and um, and then so we leave there and now I'm really nervous because I didn't realize it was a block away from this other location. Now, I had told like two of her, maybe three of her sorority sisters. I had told like a few of her cousins and I told some of my family. And I expected like, oh, it'd be like 20 people or something. Literally, people were texting me and calling me like all day long. Like, oh, oh what wow. time should I arrive? What time is this? Now I'm getting nervous and I'm like, how am I going to put these things together? 
the location I chose, um, shout out to Locksmith uh, Burger Bar Uptown. It's actually the place we had our first date at. Um, a place we connected to when we first met over meeting. Hey, this is the place that we both know, we both go to often. Um, we know the owners, you know the DJs, we know everyone in there. So they had blocked off one area for for us, um, mm-hmm. and we went through a smaller entrance where we were just going to sit down and eat. So we walk in, and it's still kind of like... We walk in, and the owner's like, oh, here's your table. I'm like, you know what? This day just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> so yeah. chill, really quick. Any clue whatsoever? Girl, no. I was so (laughs) (laughs) self-involved. I had no idea. He was acting weird. I was nervous. A little jittery. He like held my hand before we went in and he was like, you know what? I love you. I was like, I love you too. This is great. Let's go get food. (laughs) And again, you guys were together nine years at this point. Uh, Seven. Seven seven years. Okay. Seven years. And um, no, I I thought nothing of it. Again, I was so hype off of me being on TV, guys. Like (laughs) nothing could put me down. (laughs) That was to celebrate. (laughs) And you know, to me, it was like, okay, we're just going to a place that we love to go go because we go there often. Um, And again, we've had birthday parties there. We've Mm -hmm. had like you know friends events there. Like. We've supported that place a lot. So to me, the owner taking us to a table isn't that weird. Um, but it was a little, like, it made me feel even more special. I was just like, he probably saw me on Dr. Oz. This is why oh my God. So we, we sit down and Jill, because she knows everybody, runs into someone she knows. And I'm like, wait, why is anyone she know on this side of the building? Um, and they sit right next to us and they're talking like, oh, yeah. And, and he's looking at me. Like he's across from me diagonally. He's looking at me and he's giving me eyes. And he's, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're going to ruin this for me because I'm going to like lose my ish. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, no, 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 it's cool. And, um, and the DJ is now texting me and he's like, all right, like, like you got you ready? Cause this place is packed and we can't see it through the glass. I'm like, yeah. oh, all right, whatever. Like he's just trying to make you feel good. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. So they cue in the same song we met to, the Pitbull Neo song. They cue it up and I'm like, oh, Jill, we met to this song. She goes, oh, yeah, I'm like, let's go dance. She's like, all right, I was like, yeah, we can, t- all right. So then I, I grab yeah. her hand and I go to go to the other side behind the curtain. And literally as I opened the curtain, there was nothing but like rows and rows of people and flashing lights. And I was just like, what is happening on the other side? Again, I'm thinking like 20, 30 people. I pull back the curtain. Jill's looking like, what is going on? I like make her walk out first. I'm like, go ahead, walk in. She walks in oh and- God. It was starstruck. We have a video of it, and she just literally puts her hands up, like, I don't know what's happening right now. There were, I'm talking rows and rows and rows of people showed up to support the entire, he was not being sarcastic. The entire place was packed. It was so loud. There was cameras flashing. I had a speech prepared. Part of it was in Spanish. I had practice. Don't ask me to do it now, because I totally (laughs) forgot. Um, I had prepared, and it was just all thrown out the window, because in that moment, it was like, you got to just do it. So yeah. I looked at her and she's like, what's going on? And um, I turn her around and now I'm like reaching. And I start reaching and now she's like, oh crap. And I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't faint, don't faint. So I, I grab her hand, but I grab the wrong hand. So she think, I think it's like, what is going on? And as soon as I get down on one knee, she's just like, okay, I think this is happening. And I pulled the <laughs> ring, I pulled the box out. It had a little light on top of the box that shined down on the ring. And um, all I said was like, will you marry me? A whole speech out the window, all that practice for nothing. <laughs> and she, she said yes. And I wanted to make sure everyone knows she said yes. So I yelled, she said yes. And then so cute. that was it. And then the so party cute. started. And the party started and I don't remember anything. I blacked out after well, that. So. <laughs> so that is unbelievable. All those people. Oh, it, was like, it was like a telephone, Pack. how it just like. Escal- the message escalated. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Jill's family, sorority sisters, my family for showing up. My co workers. Co workers. Wow. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. It was, it, it it was made it crazy. Memorable. You know, in my head, I'm walking in and I see all these lights. I'm like, oh my God, everybody saw me on Dr. Oz. <laughs> this is my <laughs> surprise party. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> my hands in the air, like, yes, I was on Dr. Oz. That was me. And then I turn around and I see him and I'm like, oh no, girl, this is it. You're getting proposed to. Aww. It's happening. Don't ugly cry. Do not ugly cry. <laughs> so I did this like deer in headlights gasping thing and I thought I said yes out loud but no sound came out so I'm there shaking my head up and down making sure that I'm like communicating that this is what I want you know I'm like yes 
Um, but and then, you had a cap shirt, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. And yes. then with so many cameras, I'm like, okay, can y'all stop so I could ugly cry finally? Oh so then, yeah, after that, I She cried, hurting. I cried, our moms cried. Everybody I cried. I think my brothers cried. Yeah. It's so out. beautiful to have the support yeah. all yeah. around. It was yeah. great. It, it was, was, it it was, was fantastic. Unforgettable. Okay, so you're engaged. Yes. <laughs> now, the Royal Cowsers. Yes. Is the mm-hmm. name of this med- mega event yes. that you have? Hashtag happening. Royal Cowsers. We have like eighty pieces of content so far, so so check wow. us out. Um, we we actually, you know, and it's something I if, if we can give a recommendation to the listeners. Um, something we did, you know, in the very beginning was we 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 paused right after I proposed to her. We we took a beat. Uh, I think we took technically like two months maybe, and we just like mm-hmm. lived in the moment. We didn't talk about the wedding. We didn't talk about what we wanted. So we no date set yet. Nothing. No guest mm-hmm. conversation. No food. No where. No when. Nothing. Just, just enjoyed being engaged. Enjoyed mm-hmm. like coming down off that high right, of right. all that you know emotion. And I think um, Jill uh, set up actually our first ever bride and groom show, and that was the first day we were like, hey, let's let's go to something and let's like start this process. So we had okay. set it for March, I believe, right? Like a trade March. show. It's a trade yeah. show at Ohika Castle. Ohika Castle. Um, so that was our first place we went to. And I was like, if we're going to start, we're going to start at the top. I we're going to go to the most expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, can't nice. afford it. Okay. Um, so we went to Ohika Castle and I think the Royal Cowsers came from a mixture of a few things. Um, definitely being at Ohika Castle and I think, oh, man, can I, well, whatever, we're not getting paid by Ohika Castle. We had expectations from Mojica Castle that I think once we got there, the reality was like, this, it's just, it, yeah, it's a castle. There's beautiful grounds, but like, look at this ballroom. It's kind of short. Like, I'm a tall guy. Can I even raise my hand in here? You know, look at the, <laughs> look at the smell of this place. It smells like a museum in here. You know, it was, it kind of had a realistic edge to it. And, you know, and, and we started talking about, you know, there walking around, like what we wanted. And we realized kind of quickly it wasn't this place, but we, we started thinking about this idea of like, well, like it is a castle and it does have all these things, like these, these big moments, but there's also this real side to it too. And we were talking about ourselves and we feel like we're the same way. Like we are like, we like fancy stuff and, you know, we like posh and to go out, but we also like to veg on a couch and like hang out. Like we we're kind of this dichotomy as well. Mm-hmm. So we, we kind of start talking and it was really to drive back that we were like, you know, and we were actually reminded to the second piece, we, we went to Buckingham Palace um, the year prior oh no months prior same year 2018 months prior we did a europe trip with uh my siblings actually um and we went to paris and london and um and amsterdam but it was in london we went to buckingham palace that like royalty just felt so obtainable like we literally went and we have a great shot of it we went and bought scullies that said king and queen on it and we wore them in front of buckingham palace and just like became our own like queen and king you know and and we started we post them on social media and then like the engagement was crazy people were like you guys are you guys are royalty you're uptown royalty and people started like giving it to to us so then you know you fast forward a few months later now we are he could castle now we're seeing that like oh this isn't as as fancy as it could be we're like well it's obtainable like that we could be that and why not like why is royalty something that only like the elite and people with the same last name were married into like why if why can't we be royalty and we started thinking about like what royalty means to us and and it means like a few things it means your impact to your community it means your your love and appreciation for your friends and family and if you do that and you're honored by those people and you respect oh, that's then, beautiful. then you're royalty to them. You're yeah, royalty you're the in your king own... and queen of your own world. Yeah. You know, and that's the message that we definitely felt that we wanted to embody and be the example of to people in our family, our mm-hmm. friends, anyone else who was, you know, looking into our, you know, engagement and yeah soon to be wedding. It's just, you know, it's, it's obtainable. You can do it and always believe in yourself, you know, and going through the process, it has been even more and more like, um, affirmation. Yeah. It was been more and more of an affirmation to, to just continue to embody that. And, you know, it it brings a kind of self-respect and respect for others that, you know, it's just unspoken. Yeah. And another tip is once you think of something, if you do a theme or not, but once you think of a vision, it's so much easier to like remove the things that don't fit the vision. And I think that's important. Like when we were at Ohika Castle in the beginning, before we started actually talking, anything was possible, anywhere was possible. But once we decided we were going to have a royal wedding, that that narrowed the list down. Right? So that's cool. Sure. So, so what I'm hearing from you is take a second, mm-hmm. kind of chill, you know, 
enjoy that process, that, that engagement process. And then after that, if you can find a theme or something that means, you know, something that's very special to the two of you, yeah. it would kind of negate other things. Oh, for keep sure. Keep you on a, right. on a solid, on a track. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. you know, I, there are a lot of resources out there for brides and grooms now. I mean, not a ton, but there are websites, there are, you know, mm-hmm. are applications, the thing that can kind of cultivate mm-hmm. things for you. But again, if everything is an option, then it's really hard to make a decision. Yeah, it's, it's but, overwhelming. But once you decide totally. some of your priorities, it's really easy to to narrow down and get to and get to your vision, so... So now that we know the the origin of yep. the Royal Cowsers, um, can you guys tell us a little bit about your theme? What's going into this wedding? Let's talk about this now. When so, and where, yes. yeah. et cetera. Um, well, um, after going to Ohika Castle, our first one in March of 2019, we went on a castle binge. I was going to say, it's probably castles now. So, <laughs> yep. so it was like, you guys need to go to Ireland, by the way. Um, see some really amazing castles one day. I'm 17% <laughs> Irish, by the way. So. Yeah. And I want to say about the, the, your title, the Royal Cowsers, it, it is so fantastic fitting because it's such a bold title yeah. it's it's a risky title oh yeah and it, you guys are both bold you fit it well but you, you found the beauty the beauty yeah in Absolutely. that you made it so meaningful so sorry continue no 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 thank <laughs> yeah, you yeah we appreciate it um and so we went you know castle hunting um we saw some of new york but we felt like new jersey might um have better options because it's a lot more spacious. Um, there are a lot more grounds. Yeah, and when you think about it, you know, I'm from Philly and, and Jill's from New York, so it was a Jersey offers a great opportunity for both states to kind of meet in the middle, if you will. Um, our ultimate location is closer to the New York side, but you know, having the benefit of going to Jersey, you know, not only would you potentially save some some pennies, but also helps the guests that are traveling from you know potentially mm-hmm. a little further right. Away. And I just I don't know, Jersey has shown us so much that they are in the wedding business. Like there's so many venues, there's so many vendors, vendors there's yeah. so many you know hotels. Everything was just so conveniently. Uh, accessible in New Jersey. Yeah, if you're a New York City bride and groom to be, like, look in Jersey. Look in Jersey. Please look in Jersey. Cross the bridge. Do it. <laughs> or the You'll tunnel. Be fine. Whatever. <laughs> um, and so we we went to a couple different castles, and, you know, it was like... Um, Legacy Castle, Park Chateau, Pleasantdale, Skylands. Just want to name a few. It's just the name of you. Um, and it was kind of like, I felt like uh, Goldilocks. This porridge is too cold. This, was this too- castle is too small. <laughs> this castle is too, way too big and expensive. Yeah. Um, but what we wanted was to transport our guests and yeah. really like allow them to feel like we own the place, first of all. And then second of all, that they're, they're not any anywhere that they're used to being. Yeah. This is a fairy tale now. That's one You're of the, not... the benefits of, sorry, I'm kidding. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of a destination wedding, right? Is that you have to remove yourself from your comfort zone, right? I think why people show up late to weddings that are local is because they take their time, right? <laughs> but when you're going to a destination, going to something specific, like you're you're all in on that on that vision. So I think you know having um, it at a place that really looked and felt different than everyone where people are coming from was going to help us as well. Um, and we we narrowed it down to three. There were three that we were like, oh man, it's going to be one of these. But it was it's it's very Goldilocks. That's a great analogy for it because one was like <laughs> you know modern royalty. Like you walk in and it's like white and gold everywhere mm-hmm. like clearly mm-hmm. they spent millions and millions of dollars on this place um versus the latter um i'm not gonna name the name but was very like game of thrones mm-hmm. royalty mm-hmm. right and we loved we, game of we thrones felt like we time. were in winterfell yes. yeah yes. rp season eight we don't count that that season doesn't count <laughs> no, no. Um, but it felt very like transportive like like jill said the grounds were amazing um but we ended up choosing a location that kind of had the best of both it was grand and um and and beautiful but also felt like homey and not too posh where we could like bring the posh with like what we're going to be wearing and all that Mm -hmm. stuff to it um so we we nailed it down we chose our location it's pleasantdale chateau pleasantdale chateau shout out to fred fogg uh we love you man um (laughs) he is uh the operator um and chief something of of pleasantdale basically runs uh runs operations and and, um, he's the boss events he's the he's the big wig and we had a perfect conversation with him. I think he helped us decide that location too. Yeah. Um, it was a really great dialogue about what we wanted and him being like, let's let's just talk. Like we can talk yeah. numbers and we can go through all this stuff, but like, what do, what do you guys feel? And we were like, oh, really? You're not going to run us through your script of like all your benefits <laughs> and your price points and your how booked you are? You want to actually talk? And that kind of made us feel like, well, that's what we want. We want it to, to yeah. be yeah, more of cares. a dialogue. Yeah, who's on board with cares. you. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I think that plus, again, it being a mixture was was why we chose it. And it, yeah. it's beautiful. It makes sense. And also, um, we were able to get the grounds for 24 hours. Yes. Um, whereas other places, what I like to call a wedding factory, where they have like five hours for your mm-hmm. morning wedding or afternoon, and then there's another wedding coming up in right the evening. That. Get so you, out. So you have to <laughs> hurry up, get drunk, and get out, mm-hmm. you know? And so we wanted more of like a, you know, we are you know, here thriving in this place. We're flourishing. This is is your space. Yeah. And your guests are part of it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and it has actually accommodations at the castle. So we'll be staying in the castle. There's 27 or 32 rooms, something like that. So that's something we wanted as well, um, which one of the options had, the other ones didn't. Um, and it just it just felt right. Yeah, you know? it was just such a perfect fit. And that dance floor is big, son. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the dance floor, the high ceilings, dome, so everything, the grounds, the bridal suite, the grooms, yeah. little man cave. We be playing oh, video dem- games in there. Amazing. Oh my god! Yeah. So so far, what you said about your vision is like exactly right. Being that you want your guests to feel royal as well, yes. and you chose a place where they will truly feel transported we really hope so and we actually we kicked off our uh our wedding um like details i guess with our guests at our um, engagement party we actually had an art gallery theme Mm -hmm. um so we we took uh photos from our engagement shoot um actually we did two engagement shoots but we took photos from our engagement shoot um and one set of photos actually i should talk about a little bit one set of photos we took uh urban locations that mean a lot to us um and we brought like royalty themes from across the world to these locations. So we shot in like Victorian gowns. We shot in African garb. We oh, shot wow. in like this Asian Pakistani look. And we brought it to my favorite cheesesteak place in Philly. We brought it to the bodega, you know, beneath her yeah. grandma's apartment. Love Park like, in we Philly. We went to Love Park. We went to Tonic East and shot where we met. So we brought these crazy royal looks to these like urban areas and we called it urban royalty and uh we actually had all of that um 30 some odd pieces printed on canvas and we actually displayed it for our guests to be like royalty is what you make it and that was kind of our point like like look at us eating a cheesesteak right and it's gritty but we're wearing all this amazing african garb right and um we actually had a silent auction um for all the pieces and we didn't want to make money we wanted to make it fun because this is the first time that like and we didn't think that many people would show up, but we had over 170 guests show up. Um, so we, it was our first time, like, our families and friends, like, for the most part, were really engaging. Mm-hmm. So with the silent auction piece, it was kind of, like, also competitive, you know? So, like, people were, like, talking and also, like, well, you like that? Well, I like that one. Well, you've never been to Locksmith. You've never been to Love Park. It made, like, kind of a competitive conversation. Um, and then we, we, we auctioned it off to... You made a little bit of money back on the entire art gallery venue and all the printing of that stuff. <laughs> That's so clever. Almost broke even. Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, so it was kind of our, our way to say, and we had a, a little speech in the beginning to talk about royalty and what it meant to us and, and trying to say that like, we want you guys to bring this, you know, like we want you to be the kings and queens and more importantly, don't worry about upstaging us. We good. Yeah. So bring whatever that means to you here. We also had amazing photos um, by live picture studio photographer. Shout out to Mariah. Mariah. <laughs> we love her um, at Pleasantdale Chateau in a beautiful, elegant um, attire. Yeah. Um, it wasn't as costumey. This no, one no was costumes, more like yeah. GQ Vogue-ish. Mm-hmm. I told her I wanted to be James Bond and she nailed it. She did yeah. nail it. I saw Did your you pictures. see some of those? Like, if yeah. that's not, you guys were like blood Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. That gown you wore... <laughs> Was with the tra- it had like a train, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was stunning. she must have had so much fun on this shoot. Oh man, it she was the hottest day. It was, hot. day. It was hot. second hottest day. The hottest day was our actual, actual engagement, party. engagement party. It was 90 something. It was, it was wow. hot, hot, hot. It was but, so hot. Yeah, it was so but Mariah was so amazing to work so with. Professional. She was professional. And you know, I love it when someone's like, listen, girl, just suck in that gut and poke out that chest. Thank you. That's what yeah. I need. <laughs> you know, it's, okay. so it's so funny that you say that. We, don't we talk about this all the time yeah. with Mariah? She says no. she's so sensitive to things like that, especially with women, you know, like just very. She's but got she your best. To you. and yeah. I love Love that. It, You'd rather to her say it right then in the moment you than see forever that look at that photo and Let's say. Uh, I mean, listen, we say it all the time, especially with women. You know, if you if you you could have the best background, it could be composed in the in the best way. Um, but if you don't like the way you're looking. You know, That's I like it. that photo. Yeah. You know, yeah. here like at the end. So. Totally agree with Mariah did an excellent job. She knew my angles. It was beautiful. And, you know, those were the, like, that was like... the Pistil les résistance. Yes. That was what really was the icing on the cake for the... Sh- um, 
for the art show, everyone was like, oh, wow, this is what your yeah, venue we, we looks like. We revealed it separately. So yeah. we didn't do Canvas for that. We actually printed them. Yeah. Um, and I love so. that Pleasantdale does that. They allow their couples to come on site to do their engagement. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. Is, and that's if your another couple's not getting married there and you want to come on site, oh, you're going to pay pay. Yeah. <laughs> always check with your venues. That's always a good tip, like to see if they will allow you to do your engagement photos there. Because you most of the time they do want you to promote that you're getting married there. So mm -hmm. it should be a part of the package. Mm -hmm. You can save a lot of money that way. Yes. I mean, we got the price for just a shoot and we were like, mm. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. And your and your pictures are stunning. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you man, guys really do look like 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 Hollywood. Exactly royalty. what you wanted. It's yeah. gorgeous. They, they're, they're gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. I, said I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> all right, all right. Um no, we just we we really wanted again to to kind of um cross off every little box that we could. Now mm -hmm. we had the ones in costumes to represent different cultures. Now we had the ones that, you know, like the Hollywood royalty, like you said. And, you know, who, what girl doesn't want to feel like Beyonce? That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you guys mentioned these you have a lot of get-togethers. Like you yes. have a proposal get-together, you have a silent auction get-together, you yeah. have your engagement party. So and you're like, oh, it's a little get together, but 170 people show up. <laughs> yeah. so well, our expectations are always low, but <laughs> thank God for our friends and family. Like they, they always show up for us. Like, well, because they know that when we throw any of <laughs> it, it's gonna be lit. <laughs> it's gonna be not your average. Yeah. And so, what are we talking for the wedding? How many people? Uh, right now, we're um, invites. I think we're at 274. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping that it gets down to like. 260 <laughs> but we've been doing like a marketing campaign for it basically so like it'll probably be at the number no um, we so. announced it too early people booked that date people's ready they're, they're ready. ready they're all yeah. coming to support you so, yeah so we'll be somewhere north of 250 because okay. don't yeah. they say that you're supposed to invite a little bit more than what your guest list mm -hmm. is just because yeah. there's like a drop off rate gonna, right yeah. that's right I can't wait percentage. to see who drops off oh I'm like gosh. I'm putting bets against them I'm like I'm oh, lord please let me just get some sick relatives <laughs> <laughs> just kidding knock on wood yes, I don't want good. that they're not coming <laughs> um, but yeah it's 250 I mean between our family alone it's like that's like a uh, hundred yeah, something, of something it. Yeah. already because Jill knows everybody in the world my so. mom is one of 12 his dad is oh, one wow. of 12 yeah. oh yeah and we have so many cousins aunts Mad cousins. uncles and we're social. People like us. So it's like, <laughs> here comes the friends, the work friends, the friends from high school, the friends from college, yeah. friends from the block. Like, yeah. oh, man, yeah. it is so, so overwhelming. And we want to invite everyone because yeah. we know that, you know, this is going to be so special. And to share it with people is going to be even more emotional for us. We want to be able to look back and say, oh, wow, I remember that. Like, you know, and we're so excited to um to really put it together, but you sound excited. Yeah. It's refreshing I'm pumped, to see. Yeah. I'm pumped. Refreshing it's such to a see. Fun energy in this room right now. I you know, I, I think <laughs> the thing is, and a theme that you talked about actually is taking your time and it's, mm -hmm. it's like breathing through the, your experience. You know, people like I think in early stages of our relationship, maybe like year three or four, I think I started getting like, oh, are you going to propose mm -hmm. to her? Um, and I, I wasn't there mentally. I wasn't there financially. I wasn't where we I, I wasn't the guy. too much fun. Well, that too. But I wasn't, admittedly, I was not the man that I wanted to be when I got married. I wasn't that guy yet, right? I, I just didn't have the, the resources and the confidence. So I took my time, mm -hmm. right? So when it came to, you know, now seven years in and I'm, I'm working on her ring for a year, like I, I became that guy, you know, mm -hmm. I took my time to do the work. Um, and thankfully to, to Jill, there was never pressure from her mm -hmm. on get it done and do it. Um, and maybe it's because we both are very like, you know, professional people. We, we focus on our careers. We're career driven. Um, but also because I think she knows that like when it's right, it'll be right. You know, mm -hmm. right. and, and, and time is, I think, one of the best gifts you could give yourself yeah. right. for important decisions like this. What's sure. a couple of years to forever, you know? Like, if you want to be with someone for real, you'll take your time. Like, yeah. forever is a long time. And so if you are not invested in the beginning, I'm so sorry for you. You <laughs> might not be at the end. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we just wanted to, well, me, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, is this guy going to... I want him to see me at my crazy, at, you know, my... And we've seen some crazy now. Okay? You got to love me <laughs> at my Lindsay Lohan. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Okay? No. If you want this Beyonce, you got to love me at my Lindsay Lohan. Okay? I, yeah. <laughs> I think the other thing, too, if, if I could uh, assume, I think a lot of, um, you know, folks in our generation, I think are, are, are quick to make decisions, I think, because 
it, like we get with getting married and or just, you know, always oh, can go to courthouse or doing something light. And it's not that like there's anything wrong with that. But what I never want to happen like in anything in life is regret. Right. We're going to get married once. So my, my thought is, you know, and our thought is take your time, like do it the way you really want to do it so that you look back and go, it doesn't matter if it rains on that day. I went all in for it. And I, I'm, I'm happy I did the best I could, mm-hmm. you know, and I think if, if you're doing the math listening to this, you know, we're going to be engaged almost a year and a half before our actual wedding day. And why is that? Because this stuff is expensive mm-hmm. and you, you got to actually save money and you got to make a budget and you got to line to your budget and you got to prepare for it and you got to sacrifice. And mm-hmm. guess what? We can't go out this weekend and go to brunch that costs $120 because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we're saving for our wedding, you know, but it will give us the vision that we have in mind and the sacrifice towards it, you know. And I will say, if especially if you're in the tri-state area, you know, these wedding venues book a year in advance. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're going to need to actually take some time. So if you want to, you know, get proposed in March and married in July, um, you might not have the place you want. Good and if luck. that's something you're willing to sacrifice, you're willing to trade the experience for the time, great. But there's another way and it's taking your time mm-hmm. and it's planning for the future. That's so. right. right. And I love you guys are not the checklist couple. There's yeah. so many checklists that, that people will go through when they're engaged. You know, mm-hmm. book this, check, book this, check, book this, yeah. check, go get the dress. So you have a vision. Yes. And now it's just, uh, implementing that vision. Yes. Right. I also, it's really like re- refreshing for listeners to hear, you know, to, to, to hear things like this because your ideas are very inclusive in a way, you know, you don't have to, um, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, have tons and tons of money. If you, if you really, like you said, take your time yeah. to plan the right way, you could get what you want to get. You yeah. could have the things you want to have. So that's, that's awesome. I hope more people um, do that. And again, I'm not against the quick turnaround or the simple wedding. Like mm-hmm. if you want to do a wedding, great. Totally. I just feel like a lot, a lot of times it's, it's and, and, and I will say we, Jill and I together have been to 13, 14, like 13, mm-hmm. 14, 13 or 14, wedding. 14 weddings. Right. And we've seen the ones that like knew they were getting married a year in advance and how much effort and time and energy right. and all the guests were anticipating and prepare for it. And even the speeches you get are often more involved. And then we've obviously seen the like, the quick turn around too. And mm-hmm. it's like, again, having that dialogue after about like, yeah, well we want it to, but listen, right. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. You will never hear the words I wanted to, but, but come out mm-hmm. of, come out of my mouth. And I think that's really what we try to focus on. And it not, not, not always perfect. Right. Yeah. There will be issues, sure, but the effort will always be there. So who's the budgeter here and how did that come into play? How did you know what you had to work with? And if you well, could, I go, created if you the could go, you could go. You created the spreadsheet. <laughs> no, I created the spreadsheet. And did you guys yeah. worry? Did you guys worry yes. about money? Were you stressed oh, out right. about money? Like, or were you just like, no, we can do. Well, like I said, we'll take our time. We'll do this. Like, um, how, did, how did that work? Because I know couple couples argue about this. They get into. It's not, it's not always, you know, right. It could be stressful. Every day I go from stress to we could do it. to we can't do it. So we could do it. <laughs> yeah. Like every day. It's I, the emotional roller coaster. The, oh, yeah, I like I'm, hearing that. That's real. I'm insane yeah. m- mentally. Um, but it, it is so important that you're both on board. It's yeah. not one person with the vision and, and wanting to spend the money and the other one super conservative going, let's hold back, let's hold back. And then well, you're not in sync. Okay. I kind would of that dynamic. say yeah. that I have to reel um, Mr. Cowser in sometimes. <laughs> the king sometimes gets a little carried away. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but I, again, it's about working together. It's about understanding why he wants to do this, how we can execute it. And if I can figure out, we could execute it on a smaller budget, you know? Okay. So I feel like we work hand in hand. The question yeah. about the budget is just, you know, we assess our, um, what we want versus what, how much it costs versus what we can afford. And that's a great team. At yeah. least it's not shot down immediately. It's, no, you know no. what I mean? And, and there is a, um, you know, cause, so we have a, um, a, uh, a countdown clock as well as a Cute. like budget mm-hmm. to goal percentage. Mm-hmm. So we know where we are that day, every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is almost like tiers of the things that we want to do, right? There's the things that are required. Live Picture Studios is a part of that requirement. Um, mm-hmm. We've already signed that contract. Um, but then there are things that like, oh man, this will be nice. This will be nice. So those are in the budget. But, you know, Lord willing, God forbid, the budget or opportunity changes because of something, then those nice to haves go okay. away and the priorities stay, you okay. know? So I yeah. think that is, you know, an expectation that we always talk about too. But, um, the, you know, I think for, for people listening, there are resources out there that'll give you basically a pie chart of the percentages you can expect to spend on certain mm-hmm. things. And I would say as a, as a, as a man, as a, or whatever, 
I did not think that certain things were as expensive as they are. Like particular- what? Like, like what? flowers. Oh, I knew you were going to say it. I was like, what? flowers. Flowers. That's amazing. I knew it. Sorry. I didn't mean to scream that loud. Probably peaked everyone's ears just now. Um, but it was very, very surprising. I was waiting for that. So I had that expectation when I saw this pie chart. And I'm like, oh, this is, look, look, Jill, this has got to be BS, right? Like, really? We got to spend, like, you know, 15% I was on flowers? Not surprised. Like, come on. I was like, weddings are I'm still expensive. in disbelief, man. Like, I'm still in disbelief. It's so crazy. <laughs> These flowers, man. Yeah. But we did have our well, first. Well, think about a bouquet. A really beautiful bouquet at a nice place. How much that cost? You know, now yeah. you're filling up a room. I knew I it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. mm. we, we had our first showcase for our uh, centerpieces this week. Mm. Yeah, um, we're working with Debbie's Designs. Shout out, shout out to Debbie's. Shout um, out to Debbie's. Man, Please give us so a discount. Nice. They, were, they were beautiful. <laughs> now, they were and, beautiful. and what's your search process like? How did you find Debbie? How did you find like? Are you guys on reviews? Are you word of mouth? Yeah, so we started with the sites. Um, we we went to the Knot um, and and a few others, and they gave like you know you, you search by who's in that area, and then you know what are their your ratings and range. reviews, who's in your price range, um, and then we cross referenced some of the things we saw with other vendors. Mm-hmm. So when we went to Pleasantdale, we asked for their list of their preferred. Okay. You guys are on there. Shout out to you guys, <laughs> um, um, as well as folks like Debbie's are on there, and, and we yeah. use that as a cross reference. So we did go with a few preferred for that vendor um, recommendations. And what we liked about that is you're not bringing any surprises for these people. They've mm-hmm. been there. They know it because that's oftentimes something that happens. If you're bringing a vendor who's never used this space, they're going to look for stuff that another vendor won't. Like, mm-hmm. oh, where's the electrical outlet? They're not going to worry about that. They've done this <laughs> thing almost regularly. You know, <laughs> um, The only person that's not a preferred that we are using is our entertainment company mm-hmm. um, who's doing the actual visuals, which... Wait till you see this. It's going to be sick. Um, But we went with them because they have been to Pleasantdale, but their technology and their, what they have. Oh my God. Like people are going to be blown away. And that's on the priority list. Tell me about this. (laughs) Um, So if you are coming to our wedding, you're a guest. Stop listening right now. Okay. Um, Okay, good. Because there's other surprises that I want to bring up, but I didn't know if it's a surprise. So (laughs) there's, there's going to be tons of surprises, but we're talking like, you know, our, our, we're, so I'm a, I'm a gamer. I've been in gaming. Um, I'm a super fan of gaming. Um, and one of the things that we're going to have as a part of this package, again, please, your, list, your guests don't listen to this. Uh, we're going to have an arcade at our wedding, at our after party. So we're going to do like 12 to... That's so cute. Right now, I think we Love agreed that. on 12. Um, yeah. Maybe it's 10. Jill was like, uh, you can take away one more console, one uh. more game. <laughs> uh, but stations to have a real after party gaming experience. That's cool. Blow up screen with Mario Kart. Like it's going to feel like... An arcade, you know, it's going to be nostalgic and really cool. And yeah. I don't, I've never been to an after party that was that like, it's more like a kickback, you yeah. know, after yeah. party. It's like, woo, let's So there'll keep be cheesesteaks and video games. Oh, that that's amazing. Yeah. How party. personal. So, that's so yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah. So things like that, that they, this company offer that others don't. And then some of the things that a lot of companies offer, like the smoke machines, the mm-hmm. sparklers, um, and then they, the video package. I mean, but ours is like massive. It's like a 24 foot screen or something like that. Wow. It's like yeah. Insane. So. And, and on that screen, is it just looping people into what's happening on the dance floor? Or are you showing? Do you have any videos no, prepared to No, it's going to be show? some drama, you know? Okay, yeah. of course. We don't want to give drama. everything away. All yeah. right. But it is going to yeah. be very cohesive with yeah. whatever's going oh, on. Everything's connected. Yes. Perfect. Everything's yeah. well thought out, you know? Like I said, we had the time. Yeah. We They gave... That's the worst thing they could have done. They gave us time to think about this. And now we've created <laughs> all these amazing ideas. Now we're monsters. Y'all in trouble. Created the monsters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about transportation for you guys. So what do you guys... Can we talk about that? Well, you I'm guys so are excited. staying put, right? Um, so. We're going to be staying put. Uh, we're going to have our rehearsal dinner at uh, the Sheraton... Pers- Persephone? Persephone. Persephone. Persephone? Oh, wow. Persephone, okay. right? Persephone. Yeah. Persephone. <laughs> you know what? The Sheraton. <laughs> which actually, I don't know if you've ever been there. It's, it's a castle. Like oh, it, wow. it's literally a hotel castle. So we're going to have our, I've in- seen it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've driven by and I was like, is that a castle? Yes, and yes. Is it the Sheraton? <laughs> like I've so seen it. All of our guests that will be staying, get to stay in a castle and they're not, maybe not in the, not the, the main castle, castle okay. but you know, but a did castle. you guys do like, uh, did you, uh, did you offer like, um, get, um, did you make bags or anything for the guests when they're coming in? We haven't yet, but yeah, we'll yeah, have, we'll we'll have gift bags. That's Send them out the... with like white castles. Yeah. I was going to say, I like that. That's so that's cute. I love that idea. That's dope. <laughs> that was. I'm so gonna write funny. that one down. <laughs> that is so cute. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Keep the castle theme in there. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All the royalty stuff. That's right. If we will take all the royalty ideas, please <laughs> yes. and thank you. So yeah, we'll we'll be shuttling over from um from Sheraton because we'll be there the night before, and then our guests will be shuttling from Sheraton back and forth. Um, but you know, as far as uh, um v- vehicles, I guess specifically, um. 
man, this is like really wedding stuff. All right. So okay, again, this is the one I've been waiting to get to. Right, like, right, so this is the one. That's why right. I brought up. I was like, can we? Yeah. Let's do it. Um, so one of the uh, things, and I and, and I'm being honest. I know this. I sound crazy. I always sound crazy. Um, but one of the visions I had in my head as a kid, like always had as a kid, was arriving to my and I don't know why. It's always had in my head was arriving to my wedding in a helicopter. It was always the vision in my head. I didn't even know if it was real. Like I just saw it as a kid whenever I dreamt about a wedding, which didn't happen every night, but you know, like a couple times a year. <laughs> um, so the great thing about Pleasantdale is that they do have um, a helipad and partnerships with local helicopter companies. So um, so when I uh, officially arrive, I had already been at the castle all day, basically. But when I officially arrive for the guests, I will be arriving um, in a helicopter. And we hired one of the amazing um, electric violinists, Gigi. She's Russian and amazing. Um, <laughs> if you want a, a, a violinist, get a, get a Russian. Um, and she'll be playing, actually, um, Kanye songs as I land in the helicopter. Oh, my God. So, I love it. on electric violinist. So I'm like... That's in my head. We've been talking about the shot. I'm like so excited to get this shot. Um, and that's how I'll be arriving. Do you want to talk about your arrival? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's still good. No, um, yours is amazing too. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the queen will be arriving <laughs> in a horse and a carriage. That's, okay. You, know what? you don't want your hair getting blown away and stuff like that. <laughs> That's right. There you That's go. That's right. You know? yes. I need to I need to be trolleyed up <laughs> to the altar and um we were thinking about having like a procession, whether it's musicians, singers, Choir, dancers, yeah. um, to make the grand entrance. So this is on the list of like, you know, if you got it in the budget, you'll oh, you'll yeah. add it. Helicopter is like in the budget budget. Yeah, but, and so is the the horse and carriage is in the budget budget yeah. too. It's the procession and stuff that we're mm -hmm. like because it, it's actually in New York. It's kind of hard to find like a, a really good you know, drum line that can travel or stuff mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. but we're working on that. But I think that'd be amazing because when she arrives, like all the guests will be there and see that yeah. I'm, I'm coming early, but like the people who came early, it's like, he's Nobody going to see him. Everybody's yeah. going to see me. No and they're going to be like, oh my God. They will see the video. <laughs> Release <laughs> the doves. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, did you cast the horses since you're in casting? <laughs> um, no, but I... I am going to cast a couple of characters at our wedding. You yes. are. Yes. That yes. is amazing. There will be characters. There yeah. will definitely be characters. We have a lot of ideas on how to really transport people. Yeah. Like, we want people to think, like, oh, my gosh, I'm at a royal court. There's somebody yelling out in a British accent that yeah. I have arrived. There's, Here like, you, African hear drums somewhere in the corner. There's, there's, there's African like, drums. You know, there's paparazzi. Like, yeah. it's the whole shebang. Like, it is so the thought personal. Is like, if the Met Gala had a wedding, what would that look like? Yeah, that's kind of like what we're trying to okay. to execute. Visionary, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Met Gala's theme though is royalty, and everybody's yeah. going crazy. I'm, and, coming, and I'm coming to the swatting. Yes, yeah, I'm be there. <laughs> I'll be dressed in black. But I'm gonna be there. <laughs> hey, listen, and we are trying to get to all of our guests to really get into the theme. We want them to to dress up. Um, a bunch of my sorority sisters are like, so we're thinking about buying tiaras. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, Do sure. It. It's not gonna be bigger than my crown, but sure, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, we really want people to embrace it. Again, the message is you are royalty. Yeah. Bring just, those dubetas. Yeah, you know? bring bring everything um, because just step into it. Step into your queen, into your king, because that's who you are. That's who we all are. Yeah. You know, sorry, I, I have so many questions. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get girly for a second? I know. Oh, well, my first question is: Does he know about your gown? Uh, no, we're not even doing a first look or anything. No, nope, I'll be up there with everybody else. He to be at it. the altar, and if he's not crying, I'm turning around. <laughs> okay, so we can't talk details, but you chose your gown. Yes, I went to Kleinfeld and say say yes to the dress. You, you said did. yes. Yes. Okay. And it's, it's one, two. Did you guys, did you go with multiple? Um, I am going with multiple. Okay. I'll say that. Okay. That's so it. cryptic. I ask anymore. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> we know there's yeah. a crown. Yes. Oh, every, yeah, of course. I'm of a course. queen. <laughs> um, I was like, you know what? This crown, people are going to look at me and be like, is she Miss Universe or is she getting married? <laughs> you know, I really want that. I, if that's what people are saying, then I did a good job. Yeah. As you're, you guys are talking, all I can think of is, God, this should be a, a TV show, which is perfect because you guys actually have a vlog, right? We do. Yeah. Documenting yes. everything like part by part. We started so. breaking it down for people. I think it's because, you know, we talked before about how many people show up for us and you know, we are, are so thrilled that people like are excited about it. We thought we would just, you know, take a time to actually leverage all this footage from all these things and just talk about our process to hopefully even help someone else to like 
you know, right. have a either similar wedding or whatever their theme is right. and give them confidence. So we've been kind of going behind the scenes and, and the, the inner workings of it all. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the word you just used, confidence, because that's sort yeah. of like what I'm gathering from all of this. Kind of going back to what I was saying before, it's inclusive. It's a kind of, you know, yeah. if you have that confidence, you can really oftentimes times couples will just shake it off. Now we can't do that. It's not, it's not possible. Yeah. It is. It is. And again, I think it's also fair to be honest and say that confidence is just a feeling like sometimes some days you're happy and some days you're sad, some days you're confident and some days you're not. And that's okay. <laughs> like you can have your down moment, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater mm-hmm. and let go of something you really believe in right. because you're having an unconfident moment. And ultimately, there might be things that we dream of that we want, and, and maybe even some things we said here that don't get executed, but that's life. Like, we right. can't dictate right. that, mm-hmm. right? Um, it's about having a vision, having a goal, and just working towards right. it. Right. Are there any resources that you guys would recommend for couples other than, you know, it, it, this mental state of mind that you guys yeah. have created? What are their specific resources that you can... I can definitely shout out The Knot. I think The Knot and their applications now, because it's more than a website. I mean, it's an actual app. It, it will help you to kind of track and and, for, and forecast things. Um, Jill actually got a really great resource when she got her address from Kleinfeld. Kleinfeld actually has resources for things like hotel accommodations and stuff. And we actually booked our hotel through the, the, the Kleinfeld Kleinfelds. accommodation. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, there's still a few things that we're looking for. Like we still have to find who's going to actually be doing our wedding and yeah. officiating our yeah. wedding. So um, That's important, I guess, right? And I wish there was more um, like resources for officiants to like actually showcase the weddings they've done. You know, like there isn't enough to like see the vision, you know, there's like still imagery, but like, what was, what was that actual ceremony? Like, yeah. You know? What like, was the feeling in the room? Yeah. Um, and so we, we just really scoured the internet, you know, yeah. did a bunch of searches. Um, also with our experience of going to weddings, we just kind of figured out what we wanted, what we didn't want, what we yeah. liked, what we didn't like. So it was just kind of going to a bunch of, um, also bridal shows was also a really good resource. <laughs> Um, cause why, was, why are you laughing? Cause we went to one that went so whack. Oh, we, we went to so one like, in Atlantic city. I was yeah, like, yeah, let's go to one. AC. Um, you can but, skip that one guys. Yeah. <laughs> skip that one. Um, but we went, I went to one, um, by LaDonna bridal showcase. Yeah. And that one was like in like Bergen or something, New Jersey. And it was so nice. They had so many different vendors, a band, a fashion show. There was like um, like different food tastings, cake tastings. There was tuxedo rental places. It was just everything. So go to bridal shows for, for sure. Look one up locally to you. There's hundreds and hundreds of them. And yeah, just take your girlfriends, take your mom, sister. Um, I Take your groom. <laughs> I went to the last one. Yeah, it's underwhelming. Hey. But one thing I, I think I, I want to say, too, I don't know how much time you have, but um, one thing I want to say is, you know, to the grooms out there, like, I think it's important that, like, this is your day, too, right? Like, this is going to be your wedding as well. And it's not that that means you have to, like, make mandates and stuff. But, like, one thing I wanted to do, like, I hate the conventional grooms party. Like, for me, it always bothered me that, like, You're there's a bunch about, of people. Like a bachelor party? Yeah. Well, no, like, the grooms, like, the, the party, like, groomsmen. Um, mm-hmm. Like, that that side of the things like is oftentimes just a bunch of guys who probably barely know each other just standing for photos. And to me, I was like, that is such one, a waste of time and space, but two, it's like contrived. Yeah. It's like, uh, so instead of doing that, I said, I don't want groomsmen. I don't want a best man, all these things. I'm really going to communicate my Royal theme and I'm going to actually get knights. So I have a nice, of course you do a, a, a court of knights. <laughs> Um, and, and we kicked off, uh, this. Oh, okay. If you can't, you can't see Jill. She's, she <laughs> has her, her hand eyes. on her forehead and her <laughs> okay. eyes are turned up now, towards the ceiling. how do they feel about this? They were actually wearing a, a night, so night we, attire. We, uh, we had a nighting ceremony, um, in, um, at Medieval Times in New Jersey. Uh, Stop. we, we all met over Christmas at, it's in Lindenhurst, um, and, they had no idea that, I mean, but they know me, they know I'm extra, but they had no idea what I was going to do. So we went through the typical medieval times experience. You know, it's a bunch of guys getting together. So we all got drunk. How many? How many? It, yeah. it's, it's 12 guys. A dozen. Um, wow. Okay. So it's a dozen of course guys. there are. Yeah, so it's a lot. <laughs> um, so we went through the whole experience. There's a bunch of guys alcohol giving out the bro energy. <laughs> the alcohol was perfect. Um, so we got nice and toasty. And then we actually had um, a photo experience at the end, but they thought it was just going to be a photo. What it re- actually was, we had the night from medieval times come out 
Um, and we actually knighted each groom, uh, each knight, sorry, um, and actually gave them a unique sword that is um, from their favorite video game or cartoon or anime. That's so your sourced, groom gift. I, my groom so gift. Clever. So I sourced so cool. all these swords. There was 12 in total, and they were all different from different pieces from... You know, The Walking Dead Jill to Game of Thrones. To, uh, I was just going to say, Thundercats. if you could just imagine grown men who have been drinking, walking around with these big swords. They're mean, not like little swords. No, they're, they're real. Full, life-size full swords. Life-size swords. I was so scared for them. I'm like, they're going to poke themselves they're, in the eye. Are they bringing like, the swords to the I wedding? I yell that at them. Um, so they all asked. Like one, they were, we took one big group photo and everyone was just like, I think a couple cried a little bit. I mean, it was a moment, right? Uh, but they all asked at the end, like, we're bringing these to the wedding, right? And I'm like, y'all got to talk to Jill about that. Like, I don't, you know, I don't know. And so now we've been, we've been on this chat. Do they not know it's an open bar? I know, like... right? On our night chat, <laughs> we've been talking and they've, they've been coming up with ideas on how they can convince Jill. And it's like, well, what if we like actually like hold it and we protect her the whole time? Like, you guys are going OD. Do so. not come close to me with none of these stories. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so my, again, my advice is if you're a groom out there and, you know, and the conventional wedding thing doesn't feel right to you, lean into that. What does feel right to you? What would excite you? And, and lean into that thing. Bring the energy that you want because I think oftentimes why guys or grooms tune out is because it doesn't feel good to them. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel like them. It doesn't feel personal. So lean into w- what you do like. Again, I love video games and we're going to have an arcade at the end. You know, I love, you know, Game of Thrones and Walking mm-hmm. Dead and, and Thundercats. So getting my guy, the the Lionel's Thundercat yeah. sword, like made him excited and me too. So like lean into it and like and have those experiences because that's going to be a value to you. And your guests will appreciate that too. Oh, yeah. Joe, yeah. what do you have going on with the girls? Now. Um, well, I have 12 royal ladies, um, <laughs> my bridesmaids. Um, my sister is going to be my maid of honor, which I was, I forced her to be. <laughs> She's like, can you pick somebody? I'm like, I'm sorry. God only blessed me with one sister and that's Aww. your job, sis. You're and it. So, you're it. And I, I know she's like, you know, a little bit overwhelmed because we are overwhelming, but um, she she's happy to do it. And uh, my older cousin's my matron of honor. And, you know, I sent out um, personalized uh, jewelry boxes that was like glass all around, mirrored glass and a dedication personal to each one about how they're a queen. Everyone had... Um, from like quotes about being like walking into your queendom and, you know, just embracing you being a woman and ruling over your household, all those type of quotes so that every time that they looked at it, they were reminded that they were royalty too. Empowering. And they see yes. themselves in it, which yeah. is really dope. And I gave them little crowns so that they can like pin in their hair and pearls and uh, a little like lapel pin with a crown on it. Um, you know, Keeping up with the royalty theme, but also making it very personal. I I didn't take them to medieval times or anything. And but like you said, obtainable. Yeah. <laughs> Super obtainable too. Yeah. yeah. Um and yeah, it was it was a great it was a great gift. A lot of a them A lot of them cried. A lot of them cried. I gave them like little certificates, like a royal creed kind of stuff. And you guys um, are over the top yeah. with this everything you do. Wow. This is emotional. I mean, you don't get to feel this way a lot. I mean, no. in your daily life. So it's so it's so nice to acknowledge the yeah. people that you love and make make them feel that way. It's actually a really nice message of love too. Is, you know, yeah. what, what it, what we're this riding this way. We are riding it. Okay. Um, and you know, I think everyone just in general is so excited by this because they know us and yeah. they know how, um, we can get really carried away and they love seeing it. They love to experience it and they're excited to just be there with us for the ride. Um, and we're so excited cause we just locked in our bachelor bachelorette party. We're doing like a Jack and Jill bachelor bachelorette party. Um, and we're going to Mykonos, Greece. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. Mykonos. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to be. I've been watching like 300 and Troy and all these like Greek That's God movies. And when is like this going happening? to the gym. It'll be one month before. So it'll be August. Um, like peak season Greek. Um, and yeah, I'm just pumped. And now I have a, a chat with a bunch of the guys that are, are going and like we're all like working out and like yeah. trying to pump each other up. So it's. You know, make it a thing, man, and people will lean into it, you know, and, and it's been just like really great positive energy. And, you know, we have daily like affirmations that you can go and you can do it. And we're like encouraging each other and everyone's like so excited. So. Yeah, now, it's kind of like an afterthought, but I have to ask any any ideas on the honeymoon? We've been talking about it. Um, mm-hmm. We haven't planned it just yet. And I think, you know. 
to be honest, opportunistically, I'm hoping things prices go down mm-hmm. because of the current state of the world, really. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and we were thinking um, to go kind of like towards ground zero. We're thinking Pacific. So we were mm-hmm. thinking about going, you know, west of, you know, um, the, the country to places like Fiji and or Tahiti and or the Maldives. Um, mm-hmm. We have a list of the things that we'd like to do, um, but we haven't done it yet. Um, so. Yeah, I, I said for the honeymoon, I just want to go to an island that ends in E. Fiji, Tahiti, Hawaii, all the E's. Bali, yeah. <laughs> Bali all the E's, <laughs> please. Yeah. Um, and no, and I w- we didn't consider Caribbean because, you know, we go pretty often to the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, Your family's from Caribbean, right? Aren't you yes. Dominican? Yeah, my family's from the Dominican Republic. And so we're often there or going to a resort um, for a getaway or yeah. for a wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of our friends get We're have literally going to the Caribbean twice after our wedding. After our Four wedding. weddings. Yeah, we <laughs> oh, have two wow. weddings yeah. after our wedding. In November, too. They're like, yeah. they're back, back to, to back. back. Wow. So, so you want something different. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, we're already going to be in the Caribbean. Let's go farther west. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're just excited. Um, we haven't, like Jared said, locked anything in, but we're setting our sights high, of course. Yeah. And that's also another advice, like, you know, start at the top, you know, and then work your way down because regardless, like you want this to be something that you're excited about and, you know, obtainable, but you know, why not research what it's like for a five-star hotel or mm-hmm. like, you know, these, um, amazing places that you only see on Instagram, you know? So, and um, even for the vendors you work with and the location, like maybe their prices are high. Cause there's like lobster. Do you want it? Like, do you even <laughs> want a, a, you know, sushi platter? Like you can right. you know, negotiate with, uh, some of those things. So that's great advice. And now, okay. One more question. During the process, because things get stressful, oh, do you yeah. have any advice for how to keep the cool, how to keep things zen, happy? What are you guys doing specifically? Um, we do go to a wedding counselor weekly. Um, and I'm a big fan of like counseling. And There's talking. a wedding yeah. counselor? I didn't know there well, was it's a, a couple therapists okay. that we're going for. Wedding. For the wedding. Yeah. Um, and she's been teaching us a lot of great tools That's and communication. Amazing. Communication. That's the first time setting everything. up your lives yeah. for marriage. Yeah. 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 Um, we rather do it now that we're on good terms than wait till it. Something bad happens. Yeah. Something yeah. bad happens. And then it's like too late to try stuff. Yeah. Um, and we're both um, kids of divorce, so we are going walking on eggshells here. Yeah. We're trying to create a new narrative, and we have to humble ourselves regardless. So we're starting, you know, with the bare minute, like the... Um, we're starting at the beginning. We, yeah. we we need to get to know each other. And build and, our own foundation. And build so. our own foundation, yeah. That's, I had a couple, I know a couple that was buying a house, and they did the same thing. They said, you know what, let's just go to a therapist, just talk, you know, talk things through because there's a lot at stake here. Our lives are going to change. Our lifestyle is going to change financially and they're super successful, you know, so it's nothing wrong with talking it out. That's great advice. Highly recommend it. So proactive. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do it, go to someone that neither one of you know, not something, someone connected through another resource, Mm -hmm. like in your church or anything. Go to someone not connected, not Completely objective. Completely objective. That, that would be my recommendation. It's a great idea. Yeah. So, so you call it a wedding counselor, but are they talking wedding stuff or are they talking more like after the wedding? Well, well counseling is really you talking, right? Like for the most part, it's like the, us Cathartic. leading. Cathartic. Yeah, it's, it's us leading the conversation. But we have had big themes, um, you know, talked about and we discussed the the wedding itself. Um, but it's more than the wedding. It's definitely like marriage related. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's it, like Jill said, it's about communication. And it's about understanding you know, someone's um, communication style and their signals for like being in defense or being on the offense and why they are. And, and I, in the, in the couple of months we've been doing it, I've learned so much about yeah. myself. And, and I my- honestly, we communicate, um, I'm not totally different, but we understand each other even more um, when we communicate and we're able to use the tools that the therapist has given us to better our understanding of each other, of our own emotions and, and really kind of um, be vulnerable and and that's OK with yeah. one another. And, and I would say communication is key, like even if you don't want to go through a counselor. Talk things out. Like, don't be so involved in your vision that you can't hear someone else in their perspective. You know, right. like you gotta, you gotta hear people. So one thing that she had us do is, is basically kind of just say, "I think you're feeling this way and this way and this way." Like, if you know, Jared asked me for something, I hear you asked me for this. 
And I understand why you need that. This might make you feel like this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for him, it's just kind of like, yeah, I do feel like that. And for or me, it's here's just, a better way heard. of how I feel. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's a, it's a dialogue about appreciating someone's perspective on the other side. Right. That's know? actually parenting one advice that they give parents and right. how to, if a child is not listening, they w they just want to feel understood. Right. And I think as a human, we yeah. all just have this, feel this yeah. innate. Yeah. You yeah, know, you your feelings feel are understood. valid. You know, we are feeling different ways because different, you know, things affect us. And so it's just about understanding, communicating and allowing that person to go through their emotions and being OK, you know, taking a step back, taking a breath and, you know, just being there for one another. That's right. I have a three year old and I used to call her on the phone. I used to say, I'm going to pull my hair out. This is this. Th today's the day. This is the worst <laughs> day ever. They're such jerks, three year olds. Yeah. I, I I hate them. And then suddenly I realized, you know, he's got a lot going on up there. He can't yeah. express it. Like, you know, let him let him go through it. And he chilled out now. The tantrums uh, are like almost over. So Man, I'm scared of kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope to uh, we hope to have them. Um, yeah. But they are an entirely different yeah. you know, they are a creature becoming new I chapter. Yeah. New I chapter. Mean, we'll have you guys back on the podcast when that happens. Oh, we're gonna need this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I Thank you. Yeah. So amazing. So informative. Yes. I feel inspired. I, yes. I think our listeners are going to feel no, inspired my cheeks as hurt. well. My cheeks Aww. are smiling. Thank you. That means yeah. a lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, follow our hashtag, the Royal Cowsers. Yeah. Uh, we post on that most. Go check out often. our YouTube page to the Royal Cowsers. Yeah. Jill and Jared's wedding vlog. Um, and check out everything that we've done. And yeah. And we're best of luck, man, to the grooms out there. Get involved, man. Don't. Don't go, don't go quiet into that long night. Like, actually give an input. Like, yeah. And to the brides, you are queen. Have everyone bow down. Doesn't matter if they call you a bridezilla. They're just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, jealous. I personally can't wait for my team to document this wedding. This is going to be really exciting. And I, like I said, it might end up showing up there. So. Yeah. Hey, listen, um, come, you know, through. come through. Make sure to visit our website, guys, podcast.livepicturestudios.com. And please make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Live Picture Studios. You can also email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast with questions or anything you'd like for us to share. And I always say this, if anybody else wants to come on and share their stories, uh, discuss their visions for their weddings, please reach out to us. We really want to hear everybody's stories. And this podcast goes far beyond this room. There's a lot of people involved. Um, it's in particular, it's produced by K-Vibe Studios, specifically Quali, Natalia Delgado, and Mark Falcon. Our editor, shout out to Nicole Palmetti. And music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. Until next time, thank you. Happy planning. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>